Oh boy, it's Big Chungus time. It's my top 20 albums of 2021. You know, the biggest video of the year, and loads of people are doing their own lists already. Metal Meltdown's done his, Zack D Productions, and a lot of the other bigger, you know, metal publications are creating lists of the best albums of the year. So you know what? Fuck it. We're going to do ours. We're going to do our top 20 albums of 2021. Now this was a really hard year. There's so many of these albums on my list, on my top 20, that could easily be my number one. So hard to narrow it down. Last year's, which is upon the channel, that was a lot easier because there's one album that, you know, stood above the rest as the best. This year, there's so many good ones, it's really hard to pick a one. So I might even change it halfway through I'm doing this video. So that makes it more interesting. Too many albums to love. This is going to be hard. Let's get into it, but before I do, pop yours down below. What's your best albums of 2021? What's your favorite album of the year? What are some albums that almost made it? And also, you know, just for fun, throw in your worst ones as well. But we've got 20 to go through, so let's get started. Number 20 is Ultra Tumbe with Abyss Mortifier. I don't know if I've said that right. This is an album that I overlooked. This is an album that I forgot to mention on any video. But if I did, it would be in my top of the month videos because this is a beautiful blend of Death Doom. This is on that similar kind of hooded menace style. You know from the art it's going to be grim. It's going to be dark and evil. And I don't even know what's happening in that art. It's some crazy, creepy Dark Souls. There's a spider demon eating people. It's horrific. But it's exactly like the music. The music is horrific, it's dense, it's dark, it's evil, it's murky, and it's got that similar kind of asvix esque vocals. Love this album. Coming here at number 20. Number 19, Slowing It Down. Skepticism with Companion. Love me some Funeral Doom. And there hasn't been a lot this um, year. There's been a few. Um, but there's not been a lot, but Skepticism's Companion shoots to the top of the table come on i love them i did a ranking for them this year um i love alloy i love obviously stormcrow fleet it's a masterpiece and this one almost as good almost as good as the classics by skepticism so it's got to make it high into my list i've played this a lot love me some just depressing ass funeral doom and this delivers skepticism's awesome 18 we have chemists with deceiver oh yes Chemist is an amazing band. Every single album they've done has knocked it out of the park. And again, they knock it out of the park. The solos on every single song on this album melt my fucking brain. My brain starts leaking out my ears. That's how good this album is. If you want some amazing, soaring, epic, candle mess, candle mess, candle mass esque vocals, look no further. But it also has some cool, like, death growls in it, which was awesome really deep and dark which unexpected but i love those operatic vocals it's so good but yeah the riffs it's doomy it's epic doom like you know and love and it's chemist it, it's chemist it's great every time there is an album it's great and this is no different time for some carcass with torn arteries yeah torn arteries is next by carcass i love this album this might be my favorite carcass album now which is probably blasphemy like i hey, know what about hardware what about the others well, you know, taste is a thing, right? I love hard work, and I love Surgical Steel more than hard work, and this one I might love even more than Surgical Steel. It's crazy. This takes everything from Surgical Steel and just improves on it. Like, the, the songs here are so goddamn catchy. The Dance of X tab, I can't... Uh, probably said that wrong, but... Masterpiece. Kelly's Meat Emporium. Masterpiece. All these songs, super catchy, super memorable. This is death metal, like you know and love. Melodic death metal just perfected perfected carcass knocks out of the park again love them next up is ad nauseum with let's try and remember this imperative imperceptible impulse pretty sure is that a look yeah nailed it this is a huh this one's a hard one to describe just like the album cover very weird but the music is dissonant it's oppressive it's heavy it's bleak it's not black metal, it's kind of like, it's death metal, but it's just really, really harsh, heavy death metal. It's similar to, say, like a portal, that kind of sound, or a gorguts. Um, Really hard to digest, but once you do, it's amazing. It's amazing, it's one of the best of the year. 
I know Metal Meltdown had this one on his list as well. It's hard to describe, so I can't really describe it to you. All I can say is oppressive and dissonant and just walls of sound that it feels like you're in a cave while this is playing. A deep, dark, dingy cave. This is the album for that, and I love it. Necrosaurus! Next up is Asphyx with Necrosaurus, amazing death metal album from this year, from early this year. And these songs are catchy as hell. Martin's vocals, so dry, so just evil. They fit the mood. Three Years of Famine is one of the best songs of the year. I missed it out on my top ten songs because I'm an idiot. But it should have been on there. And Botox Implosion, nice little short burst of death metal. Great album, amazing vocals. You want something dark, dingy, death metal, just like Ultra Tomb Bay? I've definitely said that wrong. It's probably Ultra Tomb. Correct me in the comments. But yeah. Asphyx, a legendary band, legendary album. Next up is Bizarre Cult, a band I've been loving recently, and I'll, I'll tr when I put the names in the comments, I always fucking spell it wrong, so I'll make sure I spell it right this time, guys. This is some cold, really catchy black metal. Really interesting passages, kind of shorter songs than a lot of the black metal, which kind of do like 10 minute songs onwards. Um, so... I love the fact that I can enjoy these really short songs on a black metal album. And each one of them manages to be different from the last. And that's really hard to do with black metal or most genres, to be honest. That every song has a separate identity. And they manage to do that. So I'll give them extra props for that. Amazing album. Catchy. It's been in my most played of the, the year. So I love it. It's coming here. Next up for some sad boy times. Tribulation when the gloom becomes sound. This album, again, from earlier in the year, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece of sad boy depressing music. But it's not just that, it's catchy as hell. Oh, Leviathans. Songs like Leviathans, Daughters of the Djinn. Oh my god, the, the melodies on here, so infectious, so catchy. The singing has that kind of blackened edge to it, but it's more on the doomy side of things. It's hard to explain. Um, they've crossed multiple genres with this release. Love them, love them live. And I love this album. This might be the magnum opus. Talking about catchy black metal, Spectral Wound with a Diabolical Thirst. This is furious, fast, riffy, and catchier than COVID. This is amazing. Frigid and spellbound. Frigid and spellbound. No more singing, Questy. Frigid and spellbound. Ooh, one of the best songs of the fucking year. This album is the epitome of catchy black metal. There's only one other album I can think which is catchier than it, and we'll get to that later on. But this album, masterpiece, I want to play it right now. Surround, kill, devour. Cannibal Corpse, Violence Unimagined, one of the best Cannibal Corpse albums of all time. They knocked it out of the park with this one. Um, so much better than the previous releases, and I love the previous releases because I'm a big Cannibal Corpse fan, but this one improves on them in every fucking way. All these songs are amazing. Necrogenic Resurrection, like, come on, come on. Oh, Inhuman Harvest, um, Everything Must Go. The only things that, it's just, you just want to go around and just like swing in some limbs around like a morbid cheerleader. It's great. Love this album. It's fun as hell. It's probably the most fun album on the list. It's always going to be here. I love this. Speaking of fun, Existence is Futile by Cradle of Filth. Yeah, there's a lot of haters of Cradle of Filth. They can fuck off. They're amazing. They got me into black metal. They got me into extreme music in general. And I love pretty much all the albums. This one is one of the best. This one is probably the best one since Midian for me. I fucking adore it. Every song is catchy. Every song is memorable. Um, It, it has one of my favourite songs of the year. Uzduk, Invincible. Uzduk, Invincible. If you just want some, something like gloomy and dark and, you know, fucking hipstery, you, you know, go, go somewhere else. Go somewhere else. This is fun. This is engaging. The solos are so goddamn good. The vocals. Oh my god, we got Hellraiser on it. Just like he was in a couple of other songs. Like he was in um, Rise of the Pentagram on Phonography. Love it. Amazing vocal delivery. Love this album to pieces. One of my favourites of the year. It's come in here. Next up, Suffering Hour with the Cyclic Reckoning. This is black slash death metal done just evilly. Evilly, is that a word? More evil. Um, everything on this album just sounds otherworldly. Like, the guitars sound the most menacing sounding guitars I've ever heard. If you like the Kills or Achilles, 
whatever from last year, Melano, you'll like this album. Like, you just will, because it has that evil atmosphere in Foundations of Servitude, that long song at the end. Massive, mammoth song. Great songs to sink your teeth into. This just feels like nothing else. This feels like a... Nothing can be compared to this. Only a kills, I reckon, can be compared to this, because it just has this kind of unique factor about it. Unique sounding album. Evil and oppressive. <sighs> I fucking love it. Sign for more sad boy stuff. Swallow the Sun with Moonflowers. I love Swallow the Sun. It's one of my favourite bands of all time. And Moonflowers is just another pearl in the discography. I think it's better than the previous album. All these songs, again, catchy. This is a theme here. Um, Moonflowers in Bloom. Like, come on. Woven Into Sorrow was in my top ten songs of the year list. Because it's so good. So good. Um, the, I can't remember the name of the song, but the song with the female singing as well. No, oh, yes! The Death Growl's amazing, the beautiful singing amazing. This album is melancholic, it's beautiful. Swallow the Sun like you know and love. It's fucking awesome. Seven, we have Daikata Falk with Vedak. This is another unique album which sounds like nothing else. The amount of stuff they can cram into this album. Each song sounds different to the last. Beautiful female singing. Folky sections, thrashy sections, really heavy, like headbangy stuff that you just want to like ooh, pop around to. Um, weird sections, it's just everything in one album you could possibly want. Amazing Hungar Hungarian band. Um, what more can I say? I've played this album a lot. It's in my most played of the year. I love it. Um, just the amount of variety in this album is staggering. You need to listen to it to yourself. It's blackmail. It's avant-garde. It's fucking good. So next up is Aquilis with Bellum One. It's been a long time since the last album, which is a masterpiece, Gracious, and they came back with this. I love this album. This might be my number one, if not for a couple of little nitpicks. Um, main one being that the last song is like a really long song, but it's just ambient. I'm kind of annoyed they do that. And there's a couple of, quite a lot of instrumentals within, so eh, I like them, but take them out. Add another proper song in there and it's probably going to be my favourite of the fucking year but as it stands the songs kick ass even the instrumentals are really beautiful it's again it's kind of melancholic it's very symphonic it's very dark very just bombastic this album is it feels like you are in the woods with those kind of treants on the album cover that are about to get you creepy as hell Aquilus nails it again masterpiece of an album just wish that there was maybe one more song on it Take out a couple of the inter interludes and one more song and then 10 out of 10. The moment it's a 9 out of 10, still making it this high on the fucking list because the songs that hit, they hit fucking hard. Quillis, Bell and One, love it. Top 5 now, top 5 albums of the fucking year. Oh boy, what's it gonna be? <sighs> Number 5 is Hooded Menace with the Tritonus Bell. Death Doom Masters, I got the shirt instantly for this one. They mix in the Death Doom with this kind of heavy metal sound, it's kind of like... Um, Merciful Fate, and it just pairs so perfectly together. Pairs so perfectly together. Um, Chime Diabolicus, um, Absorb the Night, I fucking oh, forgot what it's called. But yeah, all the songs, absolutely amazing. There's the riffs in there. The vocals sound like zombies are singing. It, it's perfect. If you want a zombie themed, a horror themed death metal band, death doom band I guess to um, to just play in Halloween. Hooded Menace can do no wrong and this album is one of the best of the year and the art is fantastic as well. He's ringing a skull bell. <sighs> More about that in a different video. So yeah, love this album. It's here at number five. Number four is Spectral Law with the name that I'll put down here because I cannot pronounce that. It's like something Phobos or something but Spectra Law, um, I love them. I love them. I love them weird album art aside. I don't even know what's going on there. It's a giant dude with wings and the guy's looking up like, ah! But aside from the album art, um, the music is fucking amazing. Spacey black metal, probably my favourite type of black metal. It's cosmic kind of uh, thing, which you may see soon. <laughs> but yeah, love this band of pieces. This album is amazing. It suffers from the same thing as Aquila's. With the last songs like this kind of long noise kind of song, this ambient thing, and I don't care too much for it, but I'm glad that it's at the end so I can just kind of 
you know, not really listen to it. I love the rest of it, though. The rest of it, masterpiece. It's more proggy, more interesting than the counterpart, you know, the other one we'll talk about. But because of the last song, um, yeah, it's not quite a full package. Not quite a 10 out of 10. Again, 9 out of 10. Still adore it. Still one of my favourite bands of all time. And I still love them. Well, him. One man. <laughs> one man black metal band. Still love him. It's coming here. You know, it's in, it's in the top five. It's amazing. Top three now. This is really hard. I've swapped these around so many goddamn times. It's going to be really hard to decide what I want as my top top three. This is stupid. This, I love all the three of these albums equally. Fucking hell. Um, because it came out recently, Stormkeep Tales of Other Time is number three. Is number three. Maybe if I have longer with it, maybe next year it'll be my number one. But now it's my number three. I do think it is a perfect album. It's on the more melodic side of things. Fantasy-esque. You know, you got those inserts, like the witch screaming, the queen screaming in it. You got like dragon sounds, people chanting. It feels like a fantasy mix with melodic blackmail, like Dissection and Emperor, mixed with Rhapsody of Fire. The fucking interludes in here are some of the best interludes of all time. I usually hate interludes, like I talked about with Aquilus, and uh, I talked about some of the long songs with Spectral Law. The interludes in here fucking make the album. It sounds like summoning. This album's a perfect 10 out of 10. I want to put this number one, but there's two other albums I've been playing way more than it, so I can't. It's number three. It's number three. I don't want to press the press. Number three. Whew, here we go. Number two and number one. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Because, right, because of last year, my number two is Mayor Cognitum Solar Paroxysm. Yes, I had Mayor Cognitum and Spectral Law, the split as my number one album of last year. Um, and putting them, you know, putting Meg, my number one of two years running is a bit cheeky. Um, even though, you know, it's so close. It's so fucking close. Anyway, this album's a 10 out of 10. Solar Paroxysm is a masterpiece in black metal. Um, it just drifts you off into the cosmos, basically. You feel like you're on, like, that crazy planet and, like, the, the solar storm's happening. Um, the solos are amazing, the melodies are infectious, it's one of the greatest albums in general, in my opinion. I love this one, I've been wearing the shirt like non-stop. Love the album art, love everything about it, it's one of the best Mayor Cognitum albums. I actually prefer it to my number one now, so it might be my favourite Mayor Cognitum album, but that's a tough call. Because the band, or one man band, amazing. So, yeah, all the praise, love Mayor Cognitum, one of my favourite bands of all time. Coming here at the number two spot, and that means my number one is Aesop Trillium Dive Requiem for the Serpent Telepath. <laughs> right, this album may not be as polished or as perfect as Solar Paroxysm or Tales of Other Time. Those are more full, you can say 10 out of 10 albums for them, because they're perfect from start to finish. This one is a bit rough around the edges. Maybe you could trim a little little fat off the album, because a lot of the complaints say it's a bit too long. But fucking hell, it's a masterpiece. This album right here is my most played of the year by a long mile. Like It's over like, like 800 minutes and the others are like 400 or something. It's by a long mile, this is my most played. I always go back to this album. I always go back to this album. The vocals are the most unique I've ever heard. It sounds like Gollum singing it really sounds like an alien singing like something from bloodborne just like the album cover looks like something from bloodborne the album art masterpiece the singing is so unique and it just draws me back in the melodies are so catchy like everything about it's strange and just it makes you want to re-listen and re-listen and re-listen because all these songs are fucking weird <laughs> it's black metal cosmic black metal and um, with kind of like a death metal catchy edge to it. Uh, what can I say? It sounds like an alien is singing to you. It's the most unique black metal album. Well, one of the most unique black metal albums of the year. It's my most played of the year. I've got to put it as my number one because I play it more than all the fucking others. I love it. I wear the shirt all the time like Mayor Cognitum. Die of Requiem for the Serpent. Telepath. You know, something that's a bit rough around the edges, doesn't have to be perfect, is still my fucking favourite. Don't give a shit. 
It's an amazing album. It's my favorite. It's the best of 2021. You know, I just want to go re-listen to it right now. I want to re-listen to it right now because it's fucking amazing. So that was my list of my top 20 albums of 2021. Do you agree? Do you disagree? You probably have some stuff that I haven't put on. There's a lot of honorable mentions. I mean, I love the new Iron Maiden. Senjutsu didn't quite make the cut. Um, I love Mastodon's Hushed and Grim. Didn't quite make the cut. There's, there's a lot. Come on, the Holden Rife was an amazing album. Um, Ruins of Beverass. There was too many good albums this year. This list is stupid. But anyway, let me know what you thought down below. What's your favourite albums of 2021? And we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.